is the 2017 Infiniti QX30 2.2 litre diesel. So, gives it a wag. It's powered by a 2.2 litre diesel with a seven speed automatic box. It produces 170 PS, which is about 167 horsepower, and has 350 newton meters of torque. So, it doesn't hang around. The combined fuel economy is on, written on paper 56.7 miles per gallon, which really does kind of make this an everyday Infiniti. Being honest, you quite regularly put abnormal loads in cars, as in enough to have to put your rear seats down. So let's put an abnormal load in and let's put the rear seats down. And as easy as that, space is pretty good. It's designed for more boxy shaped items. If you have things that are in triangle kind of shapes, you would struggle to get them all in just because it's quite a boxy thing. But for items like this, tip runs, it's perfect. Now this particular car on the road is about £37,000. However, the base price for these is £33,000 or just over. But the options list on, the, on a QX30 can be quite extensive. Anything from the Bose premium sound system to a nice panoramic roof. You then add in your safety pack, which has things like uh, your blind spot assist, intelligent cruise control, which is just a fancy way of saying radar cruise control. And you can have an, in, an interior cut of pretty much anything you want within reason. Having spent an extensive amount of time in a Q30, and you can see my review previously on my channel, you definitely see the similarities. Anything from the inside is pretty much identical. The outside, the styling is the same. However, this one's just a bit higher up. It's no worse than you would see an A-Class to a GLA, because they are the same car, but one's on stilts and one's not so much on stilts. I am going to drive to Silverstone to, for the Ferrari 70th anniversary race day. And I'm gonna drive at 62 miles an hour and find out just what the fuel economy can be if you decide to drive a little slower. But first, let's clear that windscreen. Wrapping up my day at Silverstone, uh, some of the guys are checking out the QX30 behind me. On my route up here, I got 57.9 miles per gallon, which is what it says it can get combined, but it was mainly motorway. Uh, at best, I saw 62, and that was driving at 60 miles an hour, not 62, as I said I was going to do. But it's good. It's different, it stands out, and I can't complain. It gets you places, it's comfortable, it's safe, it's eco-efficient, it's cheap to insure, it's cheap to run, and I'm just generally impressed with what they've done. Inside, it's a comfortable place to be, and while I would advise you get a sunroof to give it more of an airy feel, it's not a cramped place in the slightest. It's a nice seating position with good visibility all round. Infinity, in their styling, have these kind of lumped arches, and while it can make it a bit precarious when you're going through width restrictions, the car isn't as wide as it would lead you to believe. It's actually quite a small car. The Bose sound system sounds great and the infotainment system is, well, a lot better than a lot of rival systems, let's put it that way. It's easy to use and it's pleasing to the eye, so you can't complain on that front. So generally the interior is a nice place to be. I would advise, however, that the rear legroom isn't the best. While it's not cramped and it's, it's no worse than a rival car in its class, pretty much no tall people in the back. The legroom isn't extensive and the rear headroom isn't extensive. But as I say, it kind of just goes with the class. This isn't made to take four tall people, it's meant to take a small family. So two adults up front, loads of room for that, and two children in the back with isofix clamps. Easy peasy. Sadly, the boot does, as with the Q30, I feel let this down a bit. With 430 litres of space, Sadly, my base won't fit in the back. It does have to go on the back seat. Now, that's not the end of the world. There are much worse problems to have. However, if this did have a slightly bigger boot, it would go completely up in my uh, love of this car. It goes without saying that the gear test is my most important test because there's no point in having a car that I'm gonna use every day if it can't take all of my equipment. So while this is gonna be like the Q30, it's a little bit higher up and it actually makes loading it a little bit less bendy over. Check it out. The 
performance and economy wise, well, this gives you a bit of both. Performance wise, enough that you're not hanging around on the motorway and if you do get stuck behind someone on an A road that's going considerably under the speed limit, you don't get worried to overtake them. Economy wise, well, you do get a bit of that as well. While around town, I would quite often see mid thirties out of this. On a run, you could see anything from 52 miles per gallon, and that's a mix of stop, start, stop traffic and generally getting caught, up to 63 miles per gallon if I'm on a completely clear shot. If you were to drop your speed by five or six miles an hour, you would see this go up drastically. Handling wise, I'm impressed. Where this is a higher vehicle, you'd expect it to maybe lumber around the corners, and it doesn't. You feel quite fixed and you don't ever feel it's going to roll over. It doesn't feel like it's gonna let go. And that intelligent all wheel drive gives you real driving confidence on the road. So the usual economy test that I've done is done and that's a good way of demonstrating what kind of fuel economy you get between motorways and B roads and that kind of stuff. But what about around town? When I teach, I do a lot of mainly city driving. Today is one of the exceptions where I actually have half an hour on an A road. Here's a good idea of what you can expect to see in a proper day-to-day -day life of a QX30 2.2 diesel. So that resulted in 49.7 miles per gallon total with everything, which as a normal run around is pretty impressive. It's comfortable, it's easy to drive. In traffic, you don't get that bored. Infinity have done well. Styling wise, uh, Infinity don't make ugly cars. They have a real unique design feature and I generally like it. However, I prefer this style in a Q30. I feel that in a higher car, it doesn't suit it as much. But that's my personal opinion. It's not an ugly car. I just prefer it slammed to the ground. And overall, as usual, Infiniti have done a superb job. It's a robust, economical, and safe car. It won't break, it's not expensive to run or lease, or insure, or tax on the road, and it's a comfortable way to get around.